In this Diablo 2 Resurrected build guide, I'm going to be covering the Lightning Trap Assassin. This is an endgame assassin build that can get you through Nightmare and even Hell difficulty in Diablo 2. If you're looking for an endgame assassin build, then this guide is for you. While playing the Lightning Trap Assassin in Diablo 2 Resurrected, your objective will be to move around the battlefield quickly, laying traps that will destroy your enemies for you. You'll be using the Lightning Sentry Trap, which shoots lightning bolts that pierce through enemies and deals very high damage, and the Death Trap Sentry, which explodes enemy corpses as well as firing lightning bolts. This Diablo 2 Assassin build is intended to be used for Nightmare and Hell difficulties starting around level 40. You can start the game with this build, but I personally recommend that you use our Fire Trapper build instead, and then respec into this one. If you're already playing and want to respect into this build though, the easiest way to do it is by claiming the Den of Evil reward from Akara at the Rogue Encampment. You'll get three respects, one for each difficulty, and you'll need to be on the same difficulty to reclaim them. Like most builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected, our stat distribution will focus on assigning enough points into strength to meet equipment requirements, and then assigning everything else into vitality to gain as much life as possible. Having a Hellfire Torch and an Annihilus will greatly reduce your stat investment into strength. These unique charms provide between 10 to 20 to all attributes and 10 to 20 to all elemental resistances. Having both in your inventory will save you between 20 and 40 stat points that you can spend into vitality, greatly increasing your health pool. The additional passive resistances will also allow you to depend less on plus all resistance equipment, opening up more options. If you don't have a Hellfire Torch or an Annihilus yet, I strongly recommend that you get them as soon as you can. Perfect rolled ones are very expensive, but you can get bad rolled ones for very affordable prices. Make sure to get a low roll when you're starting off, and then upgrade it when you have enough money. The Lightning Trap Assassin focuses on the Trap skill tree, but you'll also need to spend some points into the Shadow Disciplines tree. You'll use the following skills when playing this Diablo II Resurrected Assassin build. Lightning Sentry. This sentry periodically fires lightning bolts that pierce through enemies in a straight line, dealing very high lightning damage. It can shoot up to 10 times, at which point it will explode. You can only have 5 traps of any type active at the same time, so ideally you'll want to cast 4 times Lightning Sentry and 1 times Death Sentry per battle. Be aware that you might need to recast them if they run out of shots. Death Sentry. Similar to Lightning Sentry, this trap periodically fires lightning bolts, but additionally it will explode nearby corpses dealing 40% to 80% of the corpse life as both physical and fire damage in a large AoE. This trap usually creates a chain reaction where as soon as an enemy dies and explodes, all enemies start dying to subsequent explosions. Since enemy's health pool is greatly increased with each difficulty, the corpse explosion only gets better as you progress further into the game. Burst of Speed. This spell increases both your movement speed and attack speed. Different to other skills, traps are not affected by faster cast rate, but their cast speed is affected by attack speed instead. This means that a higher attack speed will mean more traps laid in less amount of time. The extra movement speed provided by this skill is very useful as well, allowing you to quickly travel through the map or run in circles while enemies die to your traps. You might have noticed that I didn't assign any points into Fade for this guide. The reason for this is that you can't use Fade in combination with Burst of Speed. Since you need the attack speed, this is the best option. Mind Blast. This is one of the best crowd control skills in the game. When used, it stuns enemies around a medium AoE and has a chance to convert them into your allies. While stunned, enemies won't attack and will remain still. Additionally, converted enemies will lure enemy attention, allowing you to lay down traps from safety. If you find yourself having trouble with an area at any point in the game, just swap to this skill and constantly cast it over your enemies while your traps finish them off. Shadow Master. This skill summons a shadow ally that will randomly use assassin skills to buff itself or to help you fight against enemies. Similar to other summons, you can cast it as many times as you want. The most relevant thing about this summon is that its elemental resistances are not affected by difficulty level and they don't have a 75% cap as players do. Because it can cast Assassin's Abilities, when your Shadow uses the Fade skill, it might end up with more than 100% Elemental Resistances, making it immune to all Elemental Damage types. This makes it into one of the tankiest summons in the game, making it a perfect meat shield for this build. Since this guide begins at level 40, you'll want to first focus on your Lightning Sentry and Death Sentry, and then work towards completing Charged Bolt Sentry and Shock Web, as each of them increases your Lightning Sentry damage. Once those are maxed, you can then spend the rest of your points into Shadow Master. You should have around 43 skill points at level 40, 39 from levels, and 4 from quests. You should have your skills placed in the following manner. At level 90, you should have 101 skill points to distribute, 89 from levels, and 12 from quests, and they should look like this.
It's important to note that traps act as separate entities from the assassin, meaning that equipment that provides plus damage, plus lightning damage, resistances, and any other category won't have any kind of effect on your traps. For this reason, you'll want to get as much plus skills as possible as it's the best way to increase your trap damage. For the rest of your equipment, you'll want to focus on maxing out resistances. When you're starting off, you'll obviously have less gear, so here's some cheap rune words and unique items that you can use while you search for better gear. For helmets, the first one is the lore rune word, and this helmet provides plus one to all skills as well as 30% lightning resistance. You can farm the runes for this by completing Nightmare Countess. The other option is a unique helmet, or any helmet that provides plus skills works great. For example, Tarn Helm, Peasant Crown, etc. For weapons, the first option is Spirit Rune Word. This rune word provides plus 2 to all skills and between 25 to 35% faster cast rate. It also increases your defense thanks to faster hit recovery and vitality. The additional mana is also great. Finding a 4 socketed weapon can be a little tricky, but stay on the lookout for Crystal Swords, Long Swords, and Broad Swords. If you happen to play the secret cow level, if you find any unsocketed of these types of weapons, you can get a guaranteed 4 sockets from Larzuk by completing the Siege of Harogoth quest. The other option is Katars, any rarity. Katars might be a great option to get plus skills early on, and you can get them from shops. Remember that you can equip two of them at the same time, so try to aim for plus traps and increased attack speed. For shield, you'll want the Ancient's Pledge Rune Word. This shield doesn't provide plus skills, but compensates by granting a huge boost to resistances, allowing you to survive early hell. For armor, the first option is the Stealth Rune Word, and this is by far the best armor that you can get early on. The 25% faster cast rate is nice, while the Poison Resistance and Faster Hit Recovery provides more survivability. The other option is Uniques. Any unique armor with plus skills is great for this build, like for example the Spirit Shroud, Skin of the Viper Magi, and Kui Hagon's Wisdom, etc. When it comes to gloves, you want to focus on defensive stats such as Life and Resistances. For the belt, you'll want something with Life and Resistances. You'll want to search for faster run walk speed on your boots as well as resistances in life. You'll want to search for rings that have life, stats, and resistances. Try to find an amulet that provides stats, health, resistances, or plus assassin skills or plus trap skills. For charms, you'll mainly want to look for plus life, plus mana, and plus trap skills. Once you're reaching max level, you'll want to start searching for the following equipment to complete your character. First up is helmets, and the first thing you want to look for is the Harlequin Crest Unique. The plus 2 to all skills is great for our damage output and the extra life, mana, and the damage reductions it provides helps with survivability. If you can afford a Cham Rune, then you can socket it here to avoid being frozen. Next up is weapons, and the one you want to be on the lookout for is the Heart of the Oak Rune Word. This weapon provides plus 3 to all skills as well as all resistances. If you have Enigma equipped, the faster cast rate will greatly increase the speed at which you can use teleport. For your shield, you'll want to use the Spirit Rune Word. This shield provides plus 2 to all skills and 25-35% to 35 faster cast rate. It also provides many defensive stats such as elemental resistances, faster hit recovery, and vitality. If you're having trouble finding a 4-slot shield, just find a Monarch Shield which can usually be found at the start of Hell Difficulty and take it to Larsuk after completing the Siege of Harogoth quest. For armor, you want to use the Enigma Rune Word. This armor provides plus 2 to all skills as well as a lot of strength and life. In addition, it provides you with a teleport spell which allows you to navigate quickly through the map. For gloves, you have two options. The first is the Mage Fist Unique, and these gloves are a great option as they provide faster cast rate and a good amount of defense. The other is the Frostburn Unique. If you're having mana issues, then these gloves are a great option as they provide a massive 40% maximum mana increase. For belt, you'll want to use Arachnid Mesh Unique. This belt provides plus one to all skills, increasing our damage output. The additional mana and faster cast rate comes in very handy as well. When it comes to boots, you have a few different options. The first is the Standstorm Unique, and these boots provide plus 20% faster hit recovery, strength, and vitality. The faster hit recovery will help avoid getting stunlocked by most enemies. The second option is Water Walk Unique. These boots provide a lot of life as well as dexterity and fire resistance. And the last option is the War Traveler Unique. If you're comfortable with your build's efficiency and want to maximize magic find, then these are perfect for you. When it comes to rings, you want to use 2x Stone of Jordan. These rings provide plus skills as well as increasing your maximum mana. When it comes to amulets, there are two options, and the first is Mars Kaleidoscope. This amulet provides plus 2 to all skills, as well as plus 20 to 30 to all resistances, and plus 5 to all attributes. Or you can use a crafted amulet, and you can search for a crafted amulet with plus skills, stats, life, or resistances. For charms, you'll mainly want to be on the lookout for plus life, plus mana, and plus skills. When it comes to mercenaries, you want to get the Act 2 Holy Freeze Mercenary from Act 2 and Nightmare for this build. The Holy Freeze Aura is great for dealing with large crowds of enemies. When it comes to equipment, you'll want to get an Infinity Rune Word for the weapon, a Fortitude Rune Word for the armor, and Andari's Visage for the helmet. 
The Infinity Rune Word is very important for this build as it greatly reduces enemies' lightning resistances, allowing you to even kill lightning immune enemies. Final tips. When fighting in small spaces, you might have difficulties staying away from your enemies while your traps finish them off. If this happens, just use Mind Blast to stun them as enemies tend to be together during these situations. Make sure to keep casting your traps during fights as they can quickly run out of ammo and explode. The Death Sentry has only 5 shots, so keep an eye on it at all times. Try to cast your traps close together to maximize damage and lure your enemies close to them. If your traps are far away from each other, they'll take much longer to kill enemies. Remember to use Mind Blast against enemies that are giving you trouble or against large crowds. If you cast your Shadow Master in town, it will usually buff itself, making it much tankier during fights. Stay tuned for more Diablo 2 build guides, and be sure to check out our Diablo 2 Resurrected Wiki for more information about the game. What did you guys think of our Assassin build? What build are you playing? Let us know in the comments below.